Do you have one of those very expensive DIY modular synthesizers? Have you ever wanted to play it chromatically out of tune? Boy, have I got the DIY module for you! The new MIDI to CV module, turning those boring MIDI messages into useful control voltages for all your modular synthesizer needs. Hello, and uh, what I have here is my modular designed uh, MIDI to CV converter. The original design was put up by Larry McGovern, also known as LKM on GitHub. Uh, there will be a link in the description to his. Uh, github page where you can actually see the original design and how it's all put together and how it all works and um, He put he was quite kind enough to put up his design for a MIDI to CV converter about two years ago uh, On the site it's got the code for the Arduino and it's got the code for and the, the schematic to make it all work properly um, and uh, About a year ago. I came up with I designed this which is basically a copy of what he's done with a few minor adjustments like I've got a switch now instead of a uh, pin connector so you can switch between the different modes and this is 3D printed face so it also works with quarter inch jack, uh, one eighth inch jacks um, when his user has been unplugged for his synthesizer he uses uh, and from this I had a few problems uh, it's all on protoboard which is you know good for prototyping all these little wires I, I soldered on, they all started to break after a while. Just bad solder joints, bad wires, I think. I've had them for years and years, and just they got brittle every time they were flex. I had to pull it apart quite a few times because my Arduino, I didn't know at the time, but my Arduino was faulty. And I used to have a lot of dropouts with uh, MIDI signals and things like that, and the notes wouldn't, they would just ring, and all sorts of weird things would happen. So once I worked out it was the Arduino, I went and redesigned the whole thing, well I kept the design but I, I transferred it from a proto board into PCBs which is what I have here. contraption it does the trick I've also swapped the placement of some things as you can see the MIDI jack is now on the top and before it was on the bottom that was purely purely so I could uh, get the boards to fit properly uh, so you can't retrofit one to the other they don't fit together you can't get the boards and put the 3d printed face on it um, because I did go and make a number of these boards I've got 10 more of them or something um, this is the first generation. Uh, I've updated the design since then. I had a few problems like the little LED in here. The signal LED didn't work properly. Uh, well, the wiring didn't work properly, but the LED itself does. So um, I've got a kind of a rudimentary fix on this one, which led me to fixing it in the design. And the alignment on some of these boards, because they are three boards stacked together and they use header pins to hold it all together, you can kind of just pull it apart like so and it comes apart. Um, but the alignment of those header pins, for whatever reason, was just half a millimetre out, a millimetre out on some of them. And uh, they don't kind of clip together as nice as I'd like it. Uh, so I've fixed all that up up. So that's all good to go. The differences between mine and Larry's, I use a trim pot so you can adjust the tuning. Uh, he suggested it in his design, but he used a 7.7 .7 or 2 uh, resistors together to make 7.7 .7 ohms, 7.7 uh, 7 .7 kilo ohms. One of the major problems with this is the MPC 4822 ICs on the back here, the, the DACs, they're not 100% accurate, they kind of waver a little bit, every one is different. So unless you tune the Arduino voltage perfectly for your specific uh, MPCs, they kind of waver a little bit on the on the tuning and on things like that. So they work all right, you know. They're fine for what for what I'm doing. But if you want you want precise uh, tracking, you might have a bit of an issue with this one. So what I have here is my modular setup. It is mostly NLC, 
non-linear circuits because they are Perth based and they run a monthly workshop here in Perth um, and you just go there, you, you, spend, you spend a bit of money, you get, they give you kit forms and you can sit there and do it in front of them and they can help you if it goes wrong. Um, so that's basically why I've got most of this, it's kind of my introduction into uh, modular. Um, there's the unit, I've just plugged in this jack and then if I press the keys maybe you can see that. It's just kind of flashing, if I get all this crap out of the way. See the light flashing in there? It's saying it's receiving a MIDI signal. I've got a, a 10k resistor in there, which is way too much for the 5 volts coming through. Is it a 1k resistor maybe? Either way, you could have gotten, I could have gotten away with a 500 or a 220 ohm resistor. But either way, that's receiving a MIDI signal now. That is on last note, highest note, lowest note. So we go um, highest note. And now what are we going to do is take the note out and put it into one of these synthesizers. So I will stop that one for a moment. So what I have here is a very simple setup patch. It's got coming in from the uh, MIDI converter into the VCO, which has the signal coming into the voltage proactive and the CV, frequency CV. So that's the voltage per octave and that's the pitch bend. And then we've got this triangle coming out into my mixer. And we've got the, the, we've got the gate coming out into the envelope generator. The envelope generator sending it into my mixer again. So, take the attack down on that. And then release. We've got a trigger as well as a gate. We've got a clock so you can send clock, clock signals through. Control, that's so you can set up a CC command. And if you've got another pitch band or a joystick or something like that you want to use, or a knob, you can assign that to the CC value. And a velocity, so it's a velocity sensitive keyboards will come through in here as well. So you can have maybe control can be linked to aftertouch or something like that. What else can we do? So that's just the basics of that, and then you can go a bit crazy with your sounds after that. So what the different modes are, we've got last note, so if you hold a chord. So we've got last note, so we can play a chord. And it'll only play the highest note. Or the last note you play, I should say. And then we've got highest mode, which is playing the highest note. So they won't play either. So last note, highest note, and lowest note, of course, is the lowest note. I usually always sit it on last note. You can get it confused just like that. See, it's lost it now. I'll drop a link in the description below to my GitHub page, which has all the Gerber files and uh, the wiring schematics, uh, also the KiCad uh, page, uh, KiCad files, so you can uh, make your own of these. Until next time, I've been Benny Bones. Adios.